There is nothing like a party. And one on the 4th of July at that. I mean, good food, good friends, family, drinks, fireworks. I mean, seriously, even though that wasn't when we were emancipated, I'm just saying the 4th of July is about fun. Just like any party, get down, boogie down, production in the backyard, whatever. You know what I'm talking about. I am your girl, Talisa Ray. Welcome back to my channel. If it's your first time visiting me, Hey, what's up? How you doing? Where you been? Stay a while, become part of my family. Click the subscribe button and be a ray of sunshine. And since you're already there, click the notification bell so you're alerted of every video that I have coming forward. For all my ray of sunshine, my current ones, you know you shine bright, honey. Throw you in the air, put you in any atmosphere and you are the center of attention. I am so grateful to and for you. Okay, so I'm sorry that this is so late. I mean, this is a week late because, you know, hell, <clears throat> today's the day for the new one to come out this evening. I just wanted to make sure that you heard my point of view about the last episode, uh, episode number four, before we get into, or episode, yeah, episode number four, before, no, episode number five, before we get into episode number six. I was on a little mini vacay, went to the lake, uh, service wasn't working, got home, had to fight with my computer, like, bow, 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 but I won, so here we are. So, in episode four, we saw Franklin really is still a pussy, right? They killed Carvel, the butt buster, the booty muncher, the rapist, the sodomizer. They killed him, but not Franklin, who I was hoping would kill him, not Franklin, but Leon, his homeboy, did the shooting of the trigger. We also see that Franklin decides, I'm going to get out. This is not the life for me. It's too much. I can't handle it. I mean, good decision, consider you a big-ass P-U-S-S-Y. At least that's what we said. At least that's what I said in the last episode. Then you saw uh, Lucia and Oso and Pedro's plan worked. They killed Enrique. They framed him. It made it look like he was just off and running with the money. So they're not looking at him anymore, right? Looking at them anymore. They've decided, okay, this is fine. Romero, that is. You know, Romero with his fine ass. He crazy. And then there's Teddy. Teddy trapes all the way from the U.S. to Nicaragua to find Alejandro to scrape off those serial numbers off of the guns and then are flying back to the States, are flying back to the States with drugs, right? Oh, he was also, he also uncovered the little mini young child spy and he felt some kind of way about having him killed because, you know, what you thought. Anyway, so here we are. Y'all forgive me, I'm kind of looking, I'm hearing noise, it's my son. So here we are, episode number five. Seven four. Seven four. As in July fourth. The entire episode is set on the fourth of July. And as I stated in the beginning, there is nothing like a good old party. And July fourth seems to bring out all the misbehavior, all the good fun, all the drinking, all the clown, and all the partying. You know how that is. And you know that I go step by step. You know, I go, um, I don't, I'm not going to go like from start to finish. Come on, son. I'm not going to go from, you know, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. I'm going to take it by Franklin, by Teddy, by Oso, because it's just easier that way. So let's start off with Teddy because Teddy is the opening scene. We see Teddy in the desert, okay, drinking water, looking dehydrated, and you look and there's Alejandro on the ground, unconscious, dehydrated. Teddy has made some makeshift, you know, shade. And um, I'm just kind of curious to how they got there. I knew that they were flying from Nicaragua to back to the States. And that Teddy did not want to go into Hawthorne Airport. But I'm confused how they ended up in the Mexican desert. 
Is that what, was that the plan that he was to go to the Mexican desert? Was that the plan? Was that the plan or did they crash? Did they have to have an emergency landing? Like I need more information on that. They didn't give me enough information. But the whole time they're in the desert, you see Teddy going crazy. You know, Teddy is not the pilot. Alejandro is the pilot. He is the... Alejandro is the pilot. Y'all forgive me. I had to look at my son like, you making all this noise. I let you come through one time. You got to come through again. Um, Alejandro is the pilot. So Teddy doesn't know how to fly, but it was Teddy's big idea to go wherever they are and end up in the situation that they are in. So we see Teddy like having conversations with himself. We hear him talk about his childhood, about his relationship with his dad, and it's a little fucked up. We, um see him chase after the parachute that he was using for shade. We see Teddy like trying to justify the reason that they were in the fucking desert. Like, oh, I don't know if you was gonna have a set up when we got back to Hawthorne or whatever. You know, it just don't make no sense. And then you see that he had hid the 75 kilos of Peruvian cocaine in the desert in case somebody had came up, which was a, which was a pretty smart idea. But considering it's the desert, if somebody picked them up, how would he find where it was? Is, was there a marker? I guess the little marsh or the trees or the grass or whatever that was would be the marker. But, um, yeah, so I was just looking like, Teddy, are you kidding me? You know, you've got a little bit of water, so you're trying to ration it out, but it sure looked like you drinking all the water. You ain't really giving much to Alejandro. You should have been wetting your little... Uh, bandana, putting it on his mouth, you know, yeah, I did see him squeezing a little bit of water in there, but it wasn't enough to be significant. He was pretty much drinking up all the water. But then we get to the part where Alejandro, Alejandro, uh, Teddy pulls out the photo of Alejandro's family and he tells Alejandro, who's still unconscious, that, you know, the mom or the wife you know, wanted me to give this to you and I don't know how you would feel. He also is a little apologetic about having them in the situation that they're in. And in the background, you see Alejandro wake up. Parched, dry mouthed, confused in the days, but he wakes up. And when Teddy sees it, Teddy's all like, are you okay? I'm all like, nigga, excuse me y'all. What the fuck you mean am I okay? I've been unconscious, we in a motherfucking desert. It's hot, I'm thirsty, I'm tired. What the fuck is going on? Why would you ask him if he's okay? Are you okay, Teddy? <laughs> Teddy, Teddy may be really bright because he is, you know, part of the CIA. He may know all of the intricacies of, you know, being observant like Jason Bourne and shit, but he ain't too bright. Like he, sometimes I be, you know, he trying to think things through and maybe he's overthinking them. I mean, he's bright, but you know, common sense is seeming like it's escaping him to me. Maybe I'm wrong. What do y'all think about that? Well, long story short, Alejandro gets better. Nightfall comes. Alejandro, we see him hydrating himself and they leave. They get in the plane that I guess they did crash or have a hard landing because the, the uh, landing gear was broken and they had to do a makeshift kind of will to help propel it into the sky or into the air into the sky and for it to fly um but we see them in the cockpit talking and I'll, uh teddy tells alejandro that your wife wanted me to give you this photo he reaches over for the photo and balls it up he does not want the memory of the son that has died because that is exactly what that is i want you to remember is what the wife said you see the wife is still living but you see no son somehow the son died i'm sure we're going to find out sometime this season how Alejandro's son died, right? So that's it for that story. I mean, nothing really was happening with them. So yeah, I'm all like, okay, whatever. <laughs> so then let's talk about also Lucia and Pedro. So when we first see them, they are in the house, the back house that's behind the church. I'm wondering, is that where Oso is living? Where was Oso living before he met Lu Lu Lucia and Pedro? Because now he's living there because he's the henchman and, you know, keeping track of the drugs or whatever. And I imagine it's the 3rd of July when we see them because she asks him, to, do you have anything to do tomorrow? 
He says, no, they send the, they send the ladies home and say no work today. We'll have more work for you next week. Well, truth be told, they are not moving their product as fast as they would have hoped. And the reason being is Romero has the east side locked down. That's what they said. I think they said the east side locked down. Ain't no way for them to get, get the money going nowhere. I mean, get the drugs moving around and about anywhere. So here's the thing with that. You're gonna, you didn't think about that when you decided to steal the money from your papa, your tio, to, to fund your drug organization. You didn't think about that shit. You didn't go two steps in advance to think, who are we gonna sell this product to? I thought that was the dumbest shit ever. Anyway, so you see uh, Lucia offer for Osho to come with her to, you know, hang out. He says he has something to do. Well, we know Osho big ass don't have shit to do. Um, then Pedro comes over the next day, says, come on, get dressed. You got a clean shirt and a tie, put it on. Let's go. He's all where we're going. We're going to my family's house. They get to the family's house and it's Lucia's papa's house. I don't know what Lucia's dad's name is, but Lucia's papa's house, which is a ranch. When they go on the ranch, of course, also is amazed at how beautiful the property is. I mean, I was in awe, like, oh, this is beautiful. This is gorgeous. You know, and the whole time Pedro had him coming, I thought, Pedro is up to no good. Like, this is, I don't like him. He is my least favorite character in this entire series. Lucia and Oso, actually, I like Oso. After this episode, I have come to really like Oso. I mean, I liked him already, but, like, I really like him now. So, um, uh, they get to the ranch Lucia sees him and her face lights up. She got this cute little red jumper, you know. You know, we in the romper. We in the we in the 80s back then, so that was banging her little romper. And she carrying her purse around in the house, which to me is a little weird. But whatever. She's happy to see him. She hugs him as if they are not employee, employer, but as friends. But we know that she got a little crush on him. And we know she, he got a little crush on her. I'm just ready for them to go ahead and fuck. Let's get it over with. Let's go ahead and add another layer to the complication of that trio, okay? Um, so Pedro's all, hey, I brought you here to meet my dad. And up walks fine ass Ramiro. Now that is one fine Latino man. He can get it, okay? Like I'm looking at him like, yes, even though he's probably shorter than me, I would still let him climb this tree. Okay, y'all, that's too much. But I'm just telling you, I can't remember what else he plays on, but he is a well-known actor, and I am in love with him. Okay, even with the crazy that he is right now, that might make me be what's in love with him. You know how we like them kind of men. It's a damn shame. Us good girls like them old. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so uh, Romero is introduced to also Gustavo, okay, by Pedro. I didn't know also meant bear in Spanish, right? So we found that out. I mean, if you don't speak Spanish already, we found that out this episode when Ramiro was like, bear, like also, like bear, you know? Anyway, so he goes, he take, he, Pedro says, hey, this is, this is my collector. I think he'd be an asset to our organization. Ramiro takes him in with Papa and him and they have a conversation and they and he asked him what do you want other than money what do you want and he says i want to i want to work i want you know i want stability i want loyalty and romero's like no you want power like we all do we want power and you could probably get it if you stay loyal to us i'm sure uh pedro told you about enrique will you do what enrique did and he said you know no senor i i wouldn't pretty much okay get out of my face you know, get out of my face, leave. So he goes outside and there's Lucia waiting for him and they walk, you know, they're like walking in the moonlight and shit. Like that is not what employer and employee does. Not the way they casually walked, okay, away, away from everybody else. And he tells them, your familia is crazy. Your cousin and your uncle are lunatics, but I like your, he's, your father is nuts, but I like him. And here's where it gets interesting between the two of them. Before I get there, uh, Romero and Pedro are having a conversation. See, Romero, Pedro is, I think, feeling kind of guilty. You know what I'm saying? He's feeling some kind of way. Um, oh, 
let me back up. So, Pedro's covering his ass. He's feeling anxious, anxiety, worried, guilty. He, um, you know, Lucia's like, this isn't a good idea. And he's all like, you think I'm going to take the fall? I'm his son. You think he would kill his only son? I'm setting y'all up for the most part. If some shit go down, it's going to be you, Lucia, and motherfucking Oso that my daddy is going to kill. Uh, unbeknownst to you, your daddy going to kill you too, Pedro, with your dumb ass. Like, what the fuck are you doing? You're not thinking five steps ahead. You don't have executive planning skills. Executive planning is to be able to think something out ahead of time. He has no executive planning skills. So, um, we see Ramiro and Pedro having a conversation. And he wants to know if he can trust us also. And... Pedro's like, yes, you can trust him. And he's like, like we trusted Enrique. And he's all like, no, you know I got your back, Dad. You know I love you. I would never do anything to hurt you. And to me, that you didn't went too far. Is that what you say to your dad all the time? You didn't went too far. And Ramiro's all like, you drunk. You don't need to drink no more. Like, what the fuck? Like, I mean, I was looking at it like, you spilling the beans. Is that the conversation that you normally have with your dad? I don't think so. That's not what the conversation that... You, part of the Mexican cartel, would have with your papi, your padre, your dad, your daddy, your father. That is not the conversation you would have. You would probably be like, I got you, dad. No, well, he cool. You ain't going to be like, you know, I love you and I never do anything against you. Like, you setting yourself up for failure. Um, so, we see Lucia and Pedro talking. And Pedro, shit, Lucia and Oso talking. You see Oso saying, I've killed two people. You guys are going to have to make me a partner, an equal partner for me to continue. I, if everything goes as planned, we've killed two people. I need to be an equal partner. Lucia says, Pedro's not going to like it. And this is when... I instantly changed how I felt about Oso. He was no longer just the big, dull, dumb henchman. He had become very crafty, very creative. He is in line. They're going to fucking get rid of Pedro. He's all like, I don't give a fuck about Pedro. I don't give a shit about how Pedro feels. I want in. I've done the majority of the dirt. I want in. Fuck Pedro. Pedro gonna have to answer to me. Like, I'm all like, all right, also. Yes. Now, if they could just clean him up, like clean that old raggedy beard up and trim his hair up and stuff and put him on some decent clothes, he, he gonna be winning. <laughs> but in the background, you see Ramiro staring at them in their conversation. So to me, I'm looking at that like Ramiro is very skeptical about the relationship between Lucia and also already like look at lucia hanging with the help i've never seen her hang with the help before number one that was one thing that ramiro said and when i was looking at it i was like this is all part of the setup because pedro knows that they have feelings for one another and if i can make it if i can make it so that it looks like they may be in cahoots against us i'm winning what y'all think where y'all think that's gonna go I need to see some more life between Teddy and uh, the Oso story. I need more life, more action. I need them to give me more. I mean, it's good backstory. I mean, I like where it's going, but I need a little action. I need to be like, I need to be like craving to see their next, see them in the next episode. Right now, I could take them or leave them and we could just talk about Franklin, right? So since we're going to talk about Franklin, let's talk about Franklin. So... The first time we see Franklin is in the kitchen with his mom. She comes in from work, it appears, or from somewhere, and he's at the counter, I mean, at the table with a photo album open flat. And they begin to talk. And as they talk, he tells his mom, I, you know, she's like, and this, you know, you know, you, you, uh, his mom is all like, you're full of shit. This sick act is full of shit. He's all like, I didn't want to tell you I quit, Mr. Chose. She says, fuck that. You're going back to Mr. Cho's. We need the money. I don't, you know, I, he's all, I don't want you to worry about money. But what the fuck you think I'm going to do? I'm going to worry about money. You need to go back to doctor, uh, doctor, to Mr. Cho's. Um, however, 
there that photo album is very significant in it he has out a photo he said mom why do you didn't tell me about these i was in the garage and look what i found and he pulls out the photo of his dad and when uh the mom turns around i believe her name is sissy when she turns around or maybe they just call her sissy like in sister sissy whatever uh, maybe her name is Cecilia. I don't know what the hell her name is, but I'm going to call her Sissy because that's what Aunt Louie called her and Uncle Jerome called her. So we see Sissy uh, kind of like is a little apprehensive, a little disgusted, at, but does not, you know, just a, a glimpse. Not enough to sway him from talking about it, but a, enough where it was noticeable. And he begins to reminisce about you know, when they used to have 4th of July parties at their house and when, um, how his dad's friends would come down from Oakland and they would have a good time. Again, we're starting off on the 3rd of January and they would come out and they would hang out and have a good time and just party and it was a good time. So right now I'm looking at Franklin and I'm going, Franklin is a young man. I mean, he's what, 18, 19? He is looking for that father figure. He is longing for his dad. I swear that's what I was saying in this very first scene that we saw Franklin. So the next scene we see Franklin, he's out looking for his dad. He's under the underpass with the other homeless men, the derelicts, the bums, asking about his dad. And then we see him in the uh, police station and at the holding cell in the police station, one of the bums sent him to the police station where his dad was being held he bailed his dad out he bailed his dad out his dad sees him they see each other his dad gets a little uh i don't know if he i i, I felt like he might have been a little embarrassed i felt like he might have been a little embarrassed uh-oh i'm sorry uh oh excuse me that was rude Seemed to be a little embarrassed, but uh, I think Franklin took it as maybe he didn't want to see him. And he leaves. Because uh, Pops grabs his stuff and gets ready to hurry up and turn around and go over to see Franklin. But Franklin's gone before he gets to him. So then we're at Uncle Jerome and Aunt Louie's house. Now, let me tell y'all this. I'm going to just put them on blast. I was watching After Buzz, and I was like, what the fuck are they talking about? They talking about Aunt Louie was on crack. Where is Aunt Louie on crack? Crack ain't even been invented yet. They still talking about cocaine. She ain't even doing no drugs. She drinks. I don't know where the fuck they got that from, but I was very disappointed at their logic behind. Evidently, they're not watching the same show we watching. Y'all forgive me. I don't mean to be bashing them, but I was mad. I was like, y'all don't know what the fuck you talking about. And maybe it comes with age and wisdom that I know some shit. But, I mean, they watching the same show we watching, and none of y'all have come up with the uh, um, premise that Aunt Louie is on some fucking drugs. Like, what? Anyway, so we see them at the party. We see them at um, Uncle Jerome's house, and it looks like a party atmosphere. Now, listen, I don't remember really not a lot of places that were hanging out on the front line like that for the party, the party would be in the backyard and we would go to the front yard for the fireworks and you do linger around there. But I, I suppose it, it, it is um, plausible that the party was on the front line or that, you know, they're trying to make it as accurate as possible. So the party is getting set up on the front line. Everybody is having a good time. You know, the babes is walking up. You know, you got the hustlers out there, honey, and they got their thick gold chains on. The music that is being played is exactly the right kind of music. Had me dancing and shit. I had wrote down what the name of the song was so I could sing, but y'all don't really want to hear that. Um, but... Then you see Sissy and Louie over at the barbecue pit, honey. And it is exactly how we as women are. You see a man checking out Sissy. She's like, is he still looking? She was like, yeah, yeah, now bend over, bend over and let him, you know, let him check you out. And that is exactly what we do. We over there giving tips and how to get, I think, I think Sissy probably needs a man so that she don't fuck with that, that, that baby daddy, that husband no more. But um, all of a sudden, who walks up? The dad. And when I say she turned into black mama bear, 
and Aunt Louie was trying to stop her but could not. She was like, what the fuck are you doing here? Why are you here? You know, like really went dug in his ass. Like, what the fuck you thought this was? Like, you can't just pop up and show up and here comes Franklin. He was like, I just want to see the boy. He was like, you ain't got nothing to say to him. He said, I just want to thank him for bailing me out. Uh, uh, you just lost your job. You bailing out your bum ass dad. Listen, y'all, I'm a mom. I got two boys. So I totally understood where she was coming from with that. I really did. So for the sake of Franklin, she tells him, if you're going to stay here, you need to go in the house and clean yourself up. Clean yourself up. Franklin takes in some clothes to give him. He, you can see he's excited that his dad is there. And I'm all like, poor kid. He's excited that his dad is there. His mom comes in and she's all like, we're not going through this again. I, this is, it's a cycle. It's a repeat. He cannot stay here. We know where this ends up. And Franklin, with his smart ass mouth, says, you're the one that him, had invited him to stay. That's not on me. She tells him he's got an hour and he's out of here. That's it. So he gets dressed. We go outside. We see Franklin, Louie, and Jerome having a conversation. Asking one, Frank, uh, Louie, oh, you didn't want to see your dad the other day and now you got him here. And then two, you're going to need to tell me what you did with that, what you needed my gun for. And Franklin, trying to jump bad all the time, talking about, no, I'm not. I don't need, you don't need to know. It's, I, I, it's my information. You such a pussy. Get yourself together. Get yourself together. Stop being like you hard. We all, we all know that you ain't about that life yet. Now, we hoping that since you want to be in the drug game, that you're going to be part of that, be that life because you got to be that life. But right now, you was a big ass P-U-S-S-Y. What they say on school days? I smell pussy. Like, that's exactly what we, we smell. So, while they're having that conversation, you see the dad looking through the window. We see the dad, like, checking out the, the uh, body language between Uncle Jerome and Franklin. Pops comes outside to have a conversation with him. He was like, what you, he, Franklin, what you want, man? Oh, you ain't got nothing to say to me. He was like, evidently I do. You came looking for me. Franklin, I don't give a damn how bad your parents are doing, whether they on crack, they alcoholics, they homeless. You do not disrespect your parents. Like, what the fuck you want? Get the fuck out of my face. That is so not appropriate for anybody. That'll get you with your mouth slapped. That'll get you punched in the mouth. You understand me? Do not be disrespectful to your parents, regardless of what their situation is. I know that we don't agree with everything they do, but God damn it, do not, yes, G-O-T, damn it, do not be disrespectful like that to your parents. I was appalled, like, he should have hit him in the throat right then and there, like, who you think you talking to, little nigga? And pretty much, that's what he ended up saying, like, oh, get the fuck out your face, like, oh, you the one who came looking for me. He was like, I don't want to hear your apology and shit. He said, I wasn't going to apologize. All I wanted to ever do was be my own man. And that's what I get to do. And you came looking for me. And you don't and you don't know shit about being a man, young blood. You don't know nothing about it. That's why you looking for me. I didn't come looking for you. You came looking for me. And that was probably some real shit. Not probably. I mean, that was a real conversation that they were having. So then we see um, the police pull up. The police pull up and are like, we heard some gunshots going off at the roof. Because earlier in the day, dumbass Uncle Jerome was on the roof with a cigarette and a whole box of fireworks go off. So when they pull up, um, they, you know, he was like, ain't no gunshots. It was fireworks. You know, what the fuck you want? That's Jerome being all ghetto and hood. And here comes his sister, Sissy, comes up. And she's like, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, no. And it's still some banter going on. And then you got Franklin in the background talking shit. And he was like, oh, and you know, since he's trying to be the mama that she is, hey, we're not doing none of that until we have a civilized conversation. We ain't before we have a civilized conversation. And really, the police are too aggressive. Like, I know y'all hear that all the time, but we know it to be true. And back in the 80s, it was definitely true. They were too aggressive. They were very racist. Um... 
knock her out. Oh, because Franklin says, uh, all we got for you here is these nuts or some shit like that. He pushes Sissy out the way. Uh, Franklin, act, again, acts like he's the big guy, big tough guy. Pushes forward. And act like he's going to do something with the police. And the police got him in a hell of a chokehold. Like the kind where you can't breathe and shit. And here comes another police car. Out jumps a big black man. And it is Melanie's dad, Andre. Hey, what the fuck are y'all doing? Like, this ain't cool. Let him go. Let him go. He breaks it up and send Melanie's ass home. But, um, listen. That whole situation is like real life how shit happens. Like, people don't be quiet. And really, if you're not disturbing nothing, should you? Like, I don't know. So, the last thing we see is Franklin with his friends, Louie and Kevin, on the roof. Uh, Franklin says, hey, can you get your, your mom's, I mean, your aunt's car tomorrow? He's all like, I think so. What we need it for? Because we going back to Avi's. Franklin is now back in the game. We knew he was coming back to the game. We knew he couldn't stay away too long. He is ready. Next episode, we'll see him at Avi's getting back into the game, okay? How are you going to have a show called Snowfall and the premise is the rise of crack in Los Angeles without somebody being part of that plan and we already know that it was eluded that it was going to be Franklin. So anyway, what did y'all think about this episode? Share your thoughts. I mean, how do you feel about the also Lucia and Pedro story? Do you feel like it could be cut out? Do you feel like Teddy's story could be cut out? I really feel like we're about to see all three of these stories come together, intertwine as one in the next couple episodes coming up here. So Tell me what you think. Uh, give me your thoughts. And don't forget to like this, share it, subscribe, and become a ray of sunshine if you haven't done so already. I am your girl, Talisa Ray. Thank you so much for watching my review of Snowfall Season 1, Episode Number 5. Uh, and I'll be doing another episode. Like, you'll be coming out tomorrow that you'll see it. Hugs and kisses and lots of love. I will see you on the next video.